we were passing the border of Afghanistan, like literally it was a few meters away from us. And it was sort of like, whoa, this is surreal. But the actual, what we were planning to do, like the actual project didn't really hit until we started stepping one foot in front of the other. Welcome to the Spartan Endurance Series on Spartan Up Podcast with host Johnny Waite. Welcome to Spartan Up Podcast. I'm Johnny Waite, one of the hosts of the Spartan Up Podcast. We have another special endurance episode for you. You want to talk about going big and going forever? I have three people here who took on a massive project, and we're going to get into that. But they spun a globe, and they'd all agreed that wherever their finger ended up blindfolded on this globe, they were going to put an event together and go there. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Honey Stinger, made with organic honey and delicious ingredients. Use the code HSSPARTAN2020 at HoneyStinger.com to save 30% off. Welcome to Spartan Up Podcast. I'm Johnny Waite, one of the hosts of the podcast. Uh, we have these special endurance episodes where we bring you people from around the world who teach you how to go faster, stronger, further, longer. And we've got a great group. We've actually had them on recently. We're having them back. They put together a, a film called Running the Roof, and it was about them running together across the country of Tajikistan. And, uh, and when they did that, they, they didn't know where they were going to go. They spun one of them around, put his finger on a globe, and it landed on Tajikistan, a country none of them had ever really heard of, per se. And, uh, but they committed that they would run across it. So we got into that in pretty good detail in the last one. Um, but what I want to talk about this time is when you put together a project like that, and it is a bigger thing than just throwing on your shoes and going, how do you make that happen? Like, how do you do all the work that's going to be required to get to 18 months out? So I'm going to start with JB. Um, uh, we've got JB, Jody, and Gabe, by the way. You'll meet them all individually momentarily. Uh, but JB, give me the 30-second the, uh, version again of how this came about, you and Gabe, uh, with the crazy idea. And then uh, get us started on the 18-month process that you had to go through to get there. Yeah, sure, Johnny. Thanks for having us back, first of all. Um, it all started, you know, like most, uh, like most awesome things in life with a bar bet. Um, mm -hmm. So me and Gabe had gone out for a few drinks. It was the middle of winter, like behind me here in Europe, um, cold and dark, and we kind of wanted to go for an adventure. So yeah, a bit of a bar bet. Gabe knows there's a big world map in my apartment. So, you know, after a couple of beers, uh, took, you know, went back to my place, spun gay brown with with this uh mask over his face and you know huge interpretation of where his finger's gonna land and we're gonna end up running it lands and it hits the pacific ocean so realizing we can't run on water we spin him around again and he lands on tajikistan so it really was that moment that point of departure where his finger landed on that on small central asian country completely landlocked completely mountainous nicknamed the roof of the world that started this whole kind of journey of um, you know, discovery and adventure to ending up us running uh, through a Bartang Valley across the country from the border of Afghanistan to the border of China. Um, and so it really is the, the greatest example of delayed gratification because from the, from the, the point that Gabe's finger hit the map and hit Tajikistan and we, we Googled Tajikistan and went onto Wikipedia like everyone does, yeah. um, you know, to actually uh, getting to this point here has been a, a, a two-year a two journey really. Um, you know, from the finger landing to actually running the best part of 18 months. And then, you know, the film has been in, in post-production for the last six. And so, you know, it's, it's been one of those sort of adventures where, you know, it started off amazing, we're going to run into Tajikistan and then suddenly, you know, committing to it, making that commitment and then realizing all the different hurdles that we had to go through along the way, you know, both personal and, you know, bureaucratic. Oh, um, sure. Well, and, and when you look at that, you know, most, as, as you put it, most bar bets, um, they never happen anyway, because everything seems like a great idea at 11 o'clock at night, and then 11 o'clock the next morning, it's like, well, that was a stupid idea. And, and that, that's even if it's a matter of, um, you know, we're, we're going to go run a marathon tomorrow, um, you know, and that's simply putting on your shoes and going and running. When you guys woke up and it was like, wow, we've committed to doing this massive thing that isn't that easy, and I want to jump to Gabe. Um, what were the very first steps? So, you know, here's the thing you've now committed to do. You're very excited about, you want to do it, but it's not happening tomorrow. How do you stay excited about something that is going to happen months and months down the road? Well, I think the thing with that is like setting a bunch of small, like achievable goals and making them fun. Yeah. Um, so whether it was like watching a documentary about the culture, culture in Tajikistan and, you know, 
talking to and doing catch up calls with my friend Jody um, and JB and talking about Tajikistan and um, getting excited about it and doing runs and calling it like a, a mini event itself doing um, a longer run and just kind of calling this calling this training just having a blast and I think if you at any point um, make it a, too much of a task then that that goal that is so far away is going to seem a lot a lot more difficult and sometimes you just got to make every step of the way as as fun as you can I love that idea, um, sort of the whole idea of a game theory, that, uh, that if, you know, every, everything is a game, you know, going shopping is a game, everything's a game, and if we can create it that way and make it something we get to do instead of something we have to do, um, it's, uh, it's a whole lot more palatable. So uh, I want to jump to Jody in terms of uh, them roping you in, because I know that this was their silly bet, and they'd committed to it, and you didn't have to do this, they did at this point. <laughs> so uh, Jody, how did, uh, how did you get uh, roped into this, and then how involved were you in the the planning process um yeah sure it so yeah gave uh, gave gave me a call um sort of with an anticipation of what this might this call might be about it was we've got something really exciting we want to ask you to do something all still quite vague um on the call it sort of mentions of tajikistan and i'm like on the call googling Tajikistan yeah. what is this <laughs> let alone where is this um and it was sort of they had already both JB and Gabe had already put so much in and you could really tell um and how passionate they were about it and also how confident that they thought that I was the right person to join them um so you sort of feel well this is an incredible opportunity I'm totally on board with and, and and they really explained like the their aim it was more to like go and see if this can be done and go and explore this place um and so I was totally on board with that it was um it sort of come back as yes it was this huge huge goal but at the same time there was not this huge huge pressure because the aim was not we must complete this otherwise we failed it was yep let's so it sort of broke it down in stages it was like we had the a goal obviously complete b goal was like let's just go and see if this can even be done um and yeah i was totally on board with it from from the off go and uh yeah from there it was like gabe was saying it was we were jumping on calls and breaking it down um into smaller tasks and sort of um and giving out tasks to each person. So we had like little projects. So it was sort of a task force, but also you're getting to the end goal, like in little micro steps. So it broke this huge daunting thing that's actually super exciting. And we were able to keep that excitement because we had already exciting little things along the way. And then we would bring it all back to each other and like get each other excited. Um, so yeah, that was right up to and during the actual event. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. And, and something you said there about the idea about trying to find out if it was even possible, and I'll jump over to JB on this one. In terms of, um, uh, you know, if you say I'm going to run across Canada, um, you know, people have some idea what that means, because, you know, there's the system of highways and everything else. Um, I loved on the, the documentary when you showed having to actually create a route and find the route. So JB, how did that happen where you guys were able to say, we're going to follow this valley, and this is how we're going to get across country? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we would kind of forget now, sitting from this position, um, and I'm sure Gabe and, and Jody agree, that when we actually decided to run across Tajikistan, you know, when your finger landed on that map, we didn't have a route, you know, we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. <laughs> sure. And so, you know, we committed to Tajikistan without really understanding the topography or, you know, the kind of landscape that we'd be moving through. And so... The elevation. Or the elevation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I genuinely... You know, honest to God, I, I, I went to a, a map store in, in London called Stanford's. It's been there for, I think, nigh of 180 years. And downstairs, they have, they basically have maps for every single location around the world. And, you know, did a bit of a map recce online and then, and then took, um, you know, went, went down and, and kind of bought some maps, some physical maps from, from this country. I'm, I'm an ex-army. I'm a bit of a map geek. And so I literally put this huge map on my kitchen table and started studying, you know, what was, what was sort of uh, in front of me and, and what was possible. 
And, you know, really after that, this, this valley, the Bartong Valley just kind of stuck out because not only was it wide and broad um, and followed up to what you could see was this high altitude plateau and then to, to a massive lake called Lake Caracal, which is this glacial lake. Um, but, you know, you, you look at the map and you're like, there's no road here. You know, there's, yeah. no, uh, there's no infrastructure. There's no major town. It's just, a, you, you know, you, you can tell when you're looking at a map, if you study them, I'm, not, I'm obsessed by them. You can tell what it's going to look like. And I started to visualize what it would be, you know, when, when I kind of looked at this map. But I was never, I mean, I, you know, what, what I visualized and then the reality, I mean, it just took my breath away. It was, it was more, even more so than, than that kind of map recce. Well, and, and the word you use there with visualize, and I'm, I'm going to keep, keep the, uh, the cycle going. I'll go to Gabe on this one. But in terms of the opportunity to share this with people, because there's going and doing something incredible and, uh, and seeing it for yourself. Um, when we climbed Aconcagua, we um, had a, uh, one of our team had dropped out. And at the end, we were at almost last minute able to recruit uh, a friend of a friend who was a filmmaker who came and and so you know suddenly my um, cell phone photos have never been pulled out again because he he was able to take these unbelievable photos and unbelievable videos. So was was it right from the get go? Was the intention let's make a documentary, or was it as you guys realized the scope of this and the grandeur of it, you realized this would make a great documentary? So I'll go to Gabe on that one. Well, initially we were thinking about just running and just going for the sake of adventure and exploration and then i said you know what I'll, I'll i'll bring a gopro along you know i'll make something with a gopro it'll be fun it'll be you know a kitschy little video and then someone uh, one of our friends said, actually you know you're gonna run across this amazing thing and nobody's gonna know about it and you know it's you're gonna come back and you're gonna tell people this amazing thing and nobody's gonna believe you um and then we reached out to another crazy friend of ours, um, who is also a yes man. Uh, we also know him through Midnight Runners. There's a lot of like, yes people. And um, Alex, so Alex is a photographer. And so he was gonna come along and take some photos. And so we we're gonna take some amazing photos. Um, and then we were said, you know, let, let's see if we can make a documentary about it. And we, two of our, our mates in London, they, wanted to get into adventure documentary filmmaking. And uh, when we sat down with them for the first time and started like plotting out some of the ideas and, you know, what we wanted from it, it, it really kind of started to like come to fruition and like the excitement in the room was so much. We all sat down and like booked those flights and um, decided that this is, we were going to do this and whether, you know, we had sponsors behind us or not, like we were going to make this happen somehow. And um, yeah, it's just kind of getting everyone together in the room and making the decision um, was that like really exciting moment when you could actually see it happening in front of your eyes. And, and Jody, I want to ask you, so now you're at that exciting moment, it's actually happening. And, um, and even though you weren't there the, the night that they came up with this idea, you know, it wasn't too long after that they recruited you. So you were still very involved in the whole process. Um, what did it feel like after you know 18 months total to finally have it really be happening so so for you what was that experience and and was it worth all the time and effort that it took to get there yeah i think the actual like process itself was was super fun and really exciting the whole way along uh i mean to work with these guys on this project with some with a great group of friends um was amazing in itself um it actually to be totally honest, didn't really hit until we stepped in the valley um, for me and started running. Like even we were there parked in the valley and we had driven and we were passing the border of Afghanistan, like literally it was a few meters away from us. And it was sort of like, whoa, this is surreal. But the actual, what we were planning to do, like the actual project didn't really hit until we started stepping one foot in front of the other um so it, the the whole thing and it sort of all then came together of like this is what we've put so much hard work into and um as a combined group as well and and even there like it only happened and we only got to the end because of the team like of yep. everyone involved um and we're obviously going to hit 
uh, little bumps in the road or what have you. And yeah, it's 100% down to the team and like the preparation beforehand that, that got us through. And then the other beautiful thing is that, you know, usually you come home from an adventure and that adventure is done except for the, the sharing right around a campfire. But because you guys had committed to making a documentary and because it got accepted into such a prestigious uh, film festival as the Banff Mountain Film Festival, which uh, is one of my favorite things in the world, um, this is a whole other adventure for you guys. So um, I, I'll jump over to JB again. I'll just keep going around you guys. So in terms of it ending up in Banff, and so now, now it's got a life beyond the event itself. Uh, how has that impacted you guys and, uh, and what, that, what that opened up for you? Look, I think, you know, we are still kind of pinching ourselves um, that we got into Banff. I think, you know, running across Tajikistan, you know, finishing that, that was one of those sort of life-changing experiences to do, to do it. And then, you know, like all adventures, it kind of fades, like you say, into like campfire memories. And then I think, you know, for this film to drop in kind of August this year and to be reminded, I think, of what we've done, you know, I, you know I've said it before, um, you know, I think it really brings on this whole new meaning this year. Um, and, you know, I certainly was incredibly nostalgic watching this film about the kind of world that we used to live in. Um, sure. and, you know, the ability to, to go out to places um, and to be spare of the moment, to be spontaneous, to, to go and push yourself, you know, to kind of really go and be young and live your life and follow the passions that you're really into, which is our case, you know, trail running and, and endurance running. And, uh, you know, I think getting into Banff is amazing, but but for me, like the film sort of speaks for itself and it's just an amazing thing and an amazing reminder to be able to look, uh, to look back at that and just remind us that when, when this is all over and it will be over, you know, we will come out the other side of it. You know, that is, that's the kind of, that's the kind of world and the kind of life that, that I like having, you know, so um, it's a nice reminder for everyone at home that, you know, hold on in there, this will pass, you know, we will be able to do those kind of things again. So uh, just a quick funny story. I was just on my way to bed uh, about two weeks ago and my daughter called me and said, dad, you have to watch this movie. It's the last night that it's available on this certain platform. And uh, it, my friend Gabe's in, it's amazing. So I was literally on my way to bed and said, I'll stay up and watch this and was just blown away by how the production value and, and, and you guys' personalities and the whole event. And it really got me excited about what's out there and what's next. And I've done some great fun things along the way. Um, but I think that, you know, people who are at home right now, and, and we're probably coming into a bit of a long winter where, you know, it, it looks like there's some encouraging news with a vaccine on the horizon, things like that, but it's still going to be another long winter, way more than anyone thought we were buying into back in March. Um, but what an opportunity to start to explore documentaries about the places that you've only heard of and watch people do incredible things that suddenly make you realize that, hey, maybe I could do this. And, um, and you know, I, I just encourage people to take this winter to actually make some big plans, watch people do amazing things. You know, I, I think you guys like to describe yourselves as very ordinary people. Like none of you guys uh, is a professional trail runner. It's not like you have a, a huge corporate machine behind you. You just said, let's go do this and did this. It's the kind of thing that I think you've inspired people to realize that they can do it too. So, um, so, especially right now when there are a lot of things you can't do, what a great opportunity to watch people who've done things that you can think about doing down the road. So um, I just, I, we're going to put the show notes, uh, put in the show notes, how they can watch the documentary. Um, but I, I want you to tell us a little bit about um, Midnight Runners. And um, uh, Jody, can I go to you this time and ask you um, uh, if you want to tell us about that? Uh, yeah, sure. You can find uh, Midnight Runners on social media, um, on Instagram, um, and also midnightrunners.com. Um, yeah. yeah, please reach out, get involved. Uh, we're in uh, 11 cities now, and also uh, the Micro app. So if you download that, you can find local groups and events happening near you. And you have a great accent. I, I heard it when, uh, when Gabe said the My Crew app, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure JB understood you perfectly, but I, I had to translate that for uh, North American viewers. So, hey Can guys, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I encourage everyone to watch Running the Roof. And I also encourage you just to dive in and find stuff out there where people have done incredible things and start thinking about what you're capable of and realize that the big, big stuff, it might be a little ways away. You know, you might have to train, you might have to save, you might have to work for it. But that's where all the really good stuff is when you're willing to just delay that instant gratification a bit to get something even bigger and better. So thank you guys so much for inspiring me and uh, 
Well, we'll, we'll have you back on sometime. I want to hear what your next adventures. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Honey Stinger, made with organic honey and delicious ingredients. Use the code HSSpartan2020 at HoneyStinger.com to save 30% off.